Welcome to Electron Online. Now that we've seen a couple of examples of how to apply the nodal analysis by inspection method, let's just run through this example, which is still a relatively simple example, a little bit more quickly so you can see how nice this method actually is. So let's go ahead and just run through the example in a rather quick fashion, and you can see, wow, I can really crank out these types of problems quickly with using this method by inspection. First thing we do is find the reference voltage. So let's go ahead and just connect the bottom of the circuit here to ground. So that's our zero volt reference. Next, we apply voltages to the two nodes. So this becomes V1 and V2. Those are the two unknown voltages we're trying to find. The next thing we do is assign conductances to each of the resistors. We have three resistors and the conductance is the inverse of the resistance. So using a different color here, we'll write this as 1 over 2, that's the conductance of this resistance, 1 over 7, the conductance for this one, and here we write 1 over 6. The next thing we do is we try to find the elements of the conductance matrix so that we can find the voltages. Here's our conductance matrix. We need to find the cross, the cross elements or the diagonal elements. We multiply that times the unknown matrix V1 and V2, and that must then equal to the current matrix Remember that these are the sums of the currents entering and leaving the nodes, V1 and V2, uh, based on only the current sources. We do not take into account the currents in any of the other branches. In V1, we can see that the 3 amp current enters, so we plug in 3 there. For V2, we can see that 12 amps leaves, we write minus 12 there. All we need to do now is find these, these elements. G11 is the sum of the conductances directly connected to V1. I see two of them. I see one half and one over six. So that's one half plus one over six. Common denominator is six. That's three over six plus one over six, which is four divided by six, which is two thirds. I'm running out of room there, but there you can see it. Two thirds, that would be the element right here, two divided by three. To find this element right here, because we, go to, we do the diagonal elements first, that's G22, which is equal to all the conductances directly connected to the second node. That would be 1 over 6 and 1 over 7. Common denominator is 42. That would be 7 over 42 plus 6 over 42, which is 13 over 42. See, that's right. That's 7. Yep, that would be correct. That's our second element right here in the diagonal, 13 divided by 42. Now we need the off diagonal elements. Here we find G12, which is equal to G21, which is equal to the conductance connecting the two nodes, the direct connection, which is right here. That's, and it's the negative of that, negative 1 over 6. So we write here negative 1 over 6 and negative 1 over 6. So those are the off diagonal elements. Now we're ready to solve the problem. We're going to first find the determinant. The determinant is equal to 13 two over 42. Here. So we multiply these elements together and then subtract the, the product of those two. Probably need a calculator for that. That's 26 divided by 3 divided by 42. And we subtract from that 1 divided by 6 squared. Equals and the determinant of this is equal to 0 0.1786. I'll just write it as 0 0.179. Okay, quickly checking that again to make sure I did not make any mistakes. So yes, I get the same result. Always a good thing to check. Now, to find the first matrix, to find V1, what we do is we take the determinant matrix and we replace the first column by the currents that we have from the current matrix. 3 minus 12, we keep those elements the same, 1 over 6 or minus 1 over 6. 13 over 42, that's 39 divided by 42, and we subtract from that the product of these two, well, that's a minus times a minus is a plus, so we subtract 12 divided by 6, that's 2, minus 2, and we get minus 1.071. Quickly checking this again, that'll be something so slightly less than 1, subtract 2 from that. So that looks good. That looks about right. Now for the second matrix to find V2, we take the determinant matrix, replace the second column by the currents in the current matrix. 2 divided by 3, minus 1 over 6. Then we write 3 and minus 12. 
2 thirds of minus 12 is minus 8. We subtract, well, subtract a negative number, that's like adding a number, minus 8 plus a half, 3 times 1, 6 is a half, that would be minus 7.5. Now we're ready to find V1. V1 is equal to the uh, quotient of the first matrix here, that's minus 1.071, divided by the determinant. Oh, I might as well write it out, that way you can see where it came from. It's always better to see that. So V1 can be found by taking the first matrix, 1 divided by the determinant. In this case, that's minus 1.071 divided by 0 0.179. And we get minus 5.98. That's about 6. Let's just write as minus 6. Minus 6 volts, close enough. And for V2, V2 we take the, um, well, I might as well write it out. Matrix 2 divided by the determinant. Matrix 2 is minus 7.5 divided by 0 0.179. Uh, close enough to 42. So we'll just call it minus 42 volts. It's a negative 42 volts and a negative 6 volts. And let's see if that even makes sense. When you drive 3 amps of current from the zero reference point to here, I would expect this to be a higher voltage. And it turns out V1 is a negative 6 volts. But then I look on the other side of the circuit and I see a 12 amp current being driven away from V2, which is of course connected to V1, which would plunge this, this voltage to a much lower voltage minus 42 volts, which then overwhelms this current right here, so causing that to be a negative voltage. So in the end, when you look at the, uh, when you look at the circuit, you look at the current sources, this 12 amps does drive the voltage down on V1 and V2, overpowering the current source on the other side of the circuit. Let's go ahead and try to find the currents in these three branches. Let's find I1, and since this is at zero volts, so we're at zero volts here, and V1 is at minus 6 volts, minus 6 volts, between these two branch points right here, I would expect the current to flow from 0 volts to the 3 volts, uh, which means that I expect the current to go in this direction, let's call it I1. So I1, which is equal to the change in the potential divided by the resistance, in this case the change in the potential is we're dropping 6 volts, 6 volts, and we have 2 ohms of resistance, so it would be 3 amps. There's 3 amps of current flowing in this direction. 3 amps of current flowing in the direction we indicated. Let's look at this current right here. Notice this is at 0 volts and this is at minus 42 volts. We can expect current to be flowing in that direction. So I, let's, let's call this I2. And I2 is equal to the change in the voltage divided by the resistance. There's a 42 volt drop and there is 7 ohms of resistance, which means there's 6 amps of current flowing in that direction. 6 amps flowing in this direction, and finally between those two, notice that the I3, uh, there will be current in this direction, because the voltage drop is from left to right, so that's equal to the change in the voltage divided by the resistance. We have a drop of 36 volts, and we have a resistance of 6 ohms, that would be 6 amps flowing from there to there, 6 amps, and now all the currents should add up correctly. 3 amps plus 3 amps is 6 amps, that equals the 6 amps in here. We have 6 amps coming up here, the two 6 amps together form 12 amps, and it looks like everything works out just fine. We have the correct currents and the correct voltages at the nodes. And notice how quickly you can come up with those numbers by using the nodal analysis by inspection. It's a really good method.